The settings I provide in this video could be used for any TV and monitor. This is the current version of my PS5 software and this video is based on this version in 2023. In the PS5 settings screen and video, video output, we have video output information. This will show you the current video output information that is going to your screen by PS5. You can see which features are compatible with your current screen from here. For example, if your screen supports VRR, 120Hz, HD and frequencies that are supported. Here we have resolution which is set to automatic by default. You can change it to 720p that is HD, then we have 1080i, 1080p as Full HD or 2K, 1440p as 2.5K and the last 2160p which is considered as 4K. About this 2K, 2.5K, 4K and 8K, here's how it works. This K is Kilo. 1000. When we say 4K, it means 4000. It refers to horizontal resolution of 4000 pixels. If I go to video output information, you can see it shows 3840 x 2160. It's not exactly 4000, so to be more specific, it's 3.84K. But anyways, people call it 4K. A real 4K is actually for multiplied 1024 pixels, which is 4096x2160. That is a real 4K resolution. 1080p is 1920 by 1080 and it's around 2000 pixels horizontally. So they call it 2K. 1440p is not 2K. That's 2560 by 1440 and it's around 2.5K. If you have a TV only capable of 1080i and 1080p, which one should you go for? I make it simple for you. 1080i is more like 720p in terms of quality. So if you want to get the highest possible quality, in 1080 you should go with 1080p that's much better than 1080i after recent updates sony added 1440p to ps5 with test 1440p your console will test all common frame rates and formats such as sdr and hdr to see which are compatible with your screen once you do it there will be multiple blinking and if you see the picture in each mode you'll select yes otherwise leave it and you'll go back to the supported resolution to test 1440p with hdr you must set hdr to always on or on when supported. Does the resolution affect FPS? Let's say I use 1440p in a set of 4K. Does it help to improve FPS or get better quality? No, this is not how PS5 works. Even if a game renders at 1080p internally, then up scales to 4K like Jedi Survivor. If you choose 1080p in console, the console still renders the up scaled version, then downscale it to 1080p in most cases as the games have dynamic resolution. Unless a game is max 1440p, for example, The Last of Us Part 1, in that case, using 1440p in console may give you a native resolution. I did test it many times and I never got improved FPS or anything in games due to changing resolution. The best option is usually automatic. This is switch the output whenever needed. For example, my current capture card supports 4K 60fps or 1440p 120Hz. When it's set to automatic, if I open a game like Overwatch 2, which has 120Hz output mode, the screen will blink. And if we go to the settings and check it once again, you can see it shows 2560 x 1440, 48 to 120 hertz, meaning the console knows that my capture card is either 4K 60 FPS or 1440p 120 FPS. So it switches automatically. If I change the game to balanced instead of frame rate, we get another screen blinking. And now we have 4K 48 to 60 hertz output. So automatic is the best in most cases unless you want to achieve a specific chroma sampling for a smoother gradient, which we'll get into that soon. Some monitors are 1440p native resolution, but they can accept 4K and downscale it. Should you use that in one case? If you want to record a custom gameplay clip in 4K, it's only possible when the console output is 4K. If you go 1440p, the max recording resolution will be 1080p. In that case, it's better to use 4K in a 1440p monitor. Otherwise, I'd recommend 1440p as a native resolution. Remember that screenshots will be taken in 4K even if the resolution is 1440p. For the highest screenshot quality, use PNG as a file type. Next up, VRR. This option matches the screen refresh rate with the game frame rate. In the supported games and supported screens, it helps to not have a screen tearing like what we had in Jedi Survivor. 
However, not every game supports this feature. Leave it on automatic and you'll be fine. Another option is apply to unsupported games. You can force VRR for the games that don't support it. Sometimes it causes screen flickering depending on your TV model. You must test it and see if it helps. If the game has tearing, turn it on and see if it helps. Otherwise, keep it off. 120 hertz output i already showed you an example of that if a game supports 120 hertz mode and your tv also supports that ps5 will switch to a supported resolution with 120 hertz output Leave it on automatic unless you don't want a higher frame rate for any reason. ALLM will automatically set your TV to the game mode when playing games. Set this option to automatic to get the least input lag. I can't do it now as I'm using a capture card and there is no support on the capture card and my current monitor. You should use automatic if you can. The next one is the 4K video transfer rate. It will change the bandwidth and the color quality. You must use automatic for the highest quality. There is only one situation where you may need to change it if you see any screen flickering going black suddenly and issues like that try minus one first and if it continues try minus two to see if it can fix the problem however it can only happen if you have a faulty hdmi cable or it's too long and it's not capable of high bandwidth in long range so use it only as a temporary solution to cable issues but normally you want automatic minus one will change the color sampling to chroma 4 to Two, and minus two will change it to chroma 420. Here's an example of the difference between full 444 or RGB versus 422 versus 420. You want the highest unless you have cable issues. When you change it, let's say minus two, if I go to video output information, again, you can see that the color format is 420. So leave it on automatic. Next up, HDR settings. We have off, always on, and on when supported. Off will always give you SDR and the games will render on SDR both internally and output from PS5. Always on will turn on HDR permanently and even if a game doesn't support HDR, it will change the colors and brightness to look like HDR. It's similar to auto HDR but I don't recommend it at all. The best option is on when supported. It will turn HDR on if the game supports it natively. Remember some games don't have good HDR quality like Diablo Ivy which I recently showed you looks better on SDR so always double check this for every game and see which looks better you can check my videos too to get the best HDR settings and some games have an SDR HDR toggle for the game however it doesn't work perfectly if you want to play a game on SDR always ensure to close the game turn off HDR completely and then open it again to get a correct SDR output now that I have HDR on we need more bandwidth for color depth on PS5 and if I go to video output information you see it's 422 not RGB because it's saying it's HDMI 2.0 my capture card actually is incapable of full RGB in HDR and 4k this is where I personally choose 1440p so it needs less bandwidth and I can get full RGB in HDR. You may get this error while switching to 1440p as I didn't test it with HDR, don't worry. Test 1440p while HDR is on and confirm that it works so you can switch to that afterwards. And now you can see I have full RGB in 1440p even with HDR. Most TVs don't have such an issue unless you have a TV or monitor that is HDMI 2.0 or a capture card that is capable of 120Hz but it's only HDMI 2.0. In that case, to achieve the highest color quality, you need to go for a lower resolution. And remember, most games on PS5 are barely 1440p. There are very few situations that a game supports native 4K resolution. So you don't lose any quality in most cases. Now I want to show you how to adjust HDR for any TV you have. If you have an LG, ensure to set your TV to HGIG. For Samsung, set contrast enhancer to off. In step 1 of 3, go higher until the logo is barely visible. This will give you the correct HDR in most cases. But sometimes it's not enough in some games. So we go one step higher to blend it into the background. It may cause a little clipping in some games like Final Fantasy XVI, but still overall it does worth it. 
The same for step 2 of 3. Make it barely visible, then one step higher. The difference between step 1 and 2 is that step 1 is a full white area and step 2 is 10% window size. Some TVs like OLEDs, LG or Samsung QD OLEDs will have mm -hmm. higher brightness in smaller sizes and less brightness in bigger window sizes. That's where bigger is not better by the way. Consider step 1 as a full blast and step 2 like a sun in a game. The sun is small and can get brighter, so that's why you have two steps for max brightness in simple words. Step 3 of 3 is near black details. This is an example picture of near black levels. If you don't see the first square and can't separate it from the background, your current TV, monitor, phone or any device you are watching this video on is incapable of showing near black levels or you have a wrong configuration on that or maybe you need to change the contrast gamma level. So step 3 of 3 affects those very dark yet not black areas. For OLEDs, I recommend making it zero. Absolutely dark, but it really depends on the game. For a game like Jedi, making it barely visible is an accurate calibration. But for Hogwarts Legacy, you want it on zero. Deep color output is needed for HDR as we need at least 10 bit color. Leave it on automatic and you don't need to turn it off in most cases. And the most important option is the RGB range. This can affect everything and give you inaccurate contrast and range. You want it to be on automatic and the TV or monitor you use will usually set itself to the correct range. In some cases, monitors are incapable of that. For example, in my Samsung TV, I have HMI black level for this setting. You must set black level to automatic as well. It's different in every TV and may have different names like black level, RGB level, RGB range, black level range, etc. You only want to change it if your TV can't match the correct range. If you set it incorrectly at first you may see the picture has more contrast and looks more beautiful but it's wrong only change it if the picture looks washed out on automatic if your tv doesn't detect that correctly try to test and use the one that is not washed out neither too contrasty and crushing details in the samsung tv if i have it on full i should set the tv to normal if i have it on low i should change the console to limited the best practice is you should tell the tv what the console is set to and match them together here low means limited and normal means full. If both have the same range, there will be no problem at all. Still, automatic should be your choice only as long as your picture is not washed out nor too contrasty. In the screen section, we have some interesting options. Adjust display area. This option will let you make the screen size smaller. If you have any issues seeing the corners due to pixel shifting or other reasons for your TV, you can make it a bit smaller, but you'll get black bars around the screen. It doesn't work on 1440p by the way. Does it affect FPS in the game or input delay? I don't know. I did never test that ever. If you like to see these tests from me, let me know in the comment section and I'll do a video for that. The dim screen while inactive will make the screen darker and reduce brightness. If you use HDR and have an OLED, it can help to prevent burning issues if you forget to turn off your console and leave it on. This way it gets darker and it's less likely to cause issues for your TV. I highly recommend keeping it on. I have it on default 5 minutes. But if you have a PS5, you probably heard about the MTU in the network setting. Some people claim it can reduce ping, increase download speeds and more. Check this video next where I explain everything you need to know about MTU on the PS5. Thank you so much for watching.